what happened in the Ramlila grounds around Baba Ramdev's protest is shocking. Shocking because it's unbelievable that the government in the largest democracy of the world could order something so nasty against its own citizens. It's shocking because we are supposed to be having freedom of speech and in that freedom of speech we have the right to protest. Shocking because as citizens of India, we are not being allowed a place to protest. Shocking because in the middle of the night, the government orders police to get inside a place where women, children and men are sleeping. And then they are shoved out in a ruthless manner. They are lathi charged, they are beaten up ruthlessly. And worst is that this could have led to a massive stampede. And many lives could have been lost. Not that the people who are battling for their lives right now, those who have been left paralyzed, those who have been left bruised is any less. But there could have been many, many more lives lost had there been a stampede. Shocking because you know, there could have been fire breaking out and that could have claimed many lives. It is unbelievable that the government actually thinks that it can do scams after scams. And when the civil society comes out to protest, it can ruthlessly crush that protest in a dictatorial manner. And if this is what the government is doing, then I must say that it's extremely sad it has not learnt its lessons well. DMK almost controlled the entire media in Tamil Nadu. What happened? People threw them out. And in 2014, when the elections come, people will get back to the government for this kind of actions. There are many who are telling, comparing it with the Jaliawala Bagh incidents or the emergency times is exaggeration. I don't think it's an exaggeration. Today, you can't throw people inside a well and shoot them down. That would be devastatingly criminal. A Jaliawala episode is about going inside a place where people are protesting against your government's corruption in a totally peaceful and non-violent manner and then beating them up. This is Jaliawala Bagh of modern day of 2011. In 2011, you can't have a Jaliawala Bagh where you throw people inside a well and shoot. This is modern day Jaliawala Bagh. And this entire attitude stinks of the same attitude that the government had during the emergency time. Therefore, it is like emergency and it is like the Jaliawala Bagh episode. There are three key counts to top it all. To top it all, there are statements coming from the Prime Minister of India that it was inevitable. Why inevitable? What is the reason why it was inevitable? And then there is of course Rahul Gandhi making childish statements that government will take strong action against the civil society if revolts like this. What do you mean by that? Civil society has the right to protest. We pride ourselves or are often criticized actually that everything in our constitution, law, legal system, etc. is copied from the Britishers. But unfortunately, when you enter Great Britain and the streets of London, you go through Hyde Park near the parliament, you see people protesting against the government on various causes, demonstrating. That is the backbone of democracy of Great Britain. We have copied everything, but this key aspect of democracy, we have not been able to copy. And today they are saying that you can't even protest in Jantar Mantar, you can't protest in Rajkhat, you can't protest in Jama Masjid. Then what do people do when government keeps on cheating its people? How can you put section 144 against peaceful protest, which is our fundamental right? It's absolutely unbelievable what the government is thinking that it can do and what it is trying to do thinking that they are the supreme dictators and people of this country will not show their protest. And Baba Ramdev is one of those rare people in this country who have a mass following from north to south and east to west. And most of these people have been actually benefited for real through his yogi thoughts. They have actually practiced yoga. You meet his followers and they swear by him that they have been benefited and the benefits are for real. And he has said that I have political ambitions. He has said that I want to. And what are the things he says? He says that why do we have 1000 rupee notes in this country? Because 1000 rupee notes facilitate black money in this country. If you have 100 rupee notes in this country, instead of 1000 rupee note to put 
to stash black money you need 10 times more space and to make stashing of black money and transfer of black money easy the government has come out with 500 and 1000 rupee notes and today all the black money is kept in 1000 rupee notes so he says abolish the 1000 rupee and 500 rupee notes like in the US and the UK dollar and pounds have 100 dollar denomination as the highest and it's such a logical demand that why do you have 1000 rupee notes it is there to facilitate stashing of black money his demands are very logical he says that we have got 1.4 trillion dollars stashed in Swiss banks India is the country with the highest amount of money stashed in Swiss banks. At the second spot is Russia with about 450 billion dollars. That's about 1 trillion dollar less than Indian black money that is stashed abroad. At the fifth position is China with just 96 billion dollars. That's the kind of difference that is there between the Indian black money and the rest of the world. The other four countries combined don't have as much black money as Indians have stashed abroad. And he says get the black money back. Why isn't the government getting the black money back? It is not true anymore that the Swiss government won't give the names. The Swiss laws have changed. They are ready to reveal the name. Why isn't government taking the names from there? Because it is suspected that it is the government and people in the government whose money is stashed there. And they are taking time to transfer that money to places like Dubai where the privacy laws are stricter and people still don't reveal the names and then they will ask the Swiss government to give the names and by then the money has gone away and the Swiss government will have no names. And this is the reason why the government is extremely scared of Baba Ramdev. They are extremely scared of Baba Ramdev because RSS is showing proximity to Baba Ramdev. And they're scared that if they join hands, then there could be a true strong opposition. And therefore, they resort to the most undemocratic means to crush a peaceful, non-violent protest. I don't care about what are the other thoughts of Baba Ramdev. I just know in these two things, he's absolutely correct. And the government was extremely wrong in doing what it did. But this apart, there's another story. The entire incident shows that how spineless our Indian opposition is. In any other country, this kind of an incident would have paved a certain way for the opposition to come to power next time. But BJP, this is not a certainty. They might still come to power in 2014 and that wouldn't be because they could cash on the opportunity and jump on it and really make a countrywide protest and bring people out on the streets to demonstrate. No, it's not because of that. BJP might come to power in 2014 despite its presence. And the reason why they might come to power is because people would be so fed up with Congress that they will vote for the BJP, not necessarily because BJP did anything extremely powerful to take advantage of one after the other huge problems that the Congress is creating for itself. It was a golden opportunity for BJP that the Congress gave to prove that they are a good opposition and to make a stronger base for their return in 2014. Unfortunately, I would say that they lost this opportunity. Instead of calling for a nationwide protest, they could hardly do anything except for giving some TV interviews. If this is the kind of opposition that we have in this country, then we deserve Congress. We deserve such people who will rule like dictators in this country. The final point which has really exposed the government and in fact the media also is Indian government and media's double standards on this cliched concept of India versus Bharat. When Anna Hazare was protesting, there were designer cloth clad people standing at Jantar Mantar. And at that point of time, the government couldn't have dreamt of using this kind of police force. When Ramdev started protesting, these were the armed janta, the real people of India or Bharat as we call. They were poor typically and therefore the government had the courage of lati charging them. Because government thinks nothing of the poor. They have not given them food to eat, they have not given them education, they have not given them access to health. And then when they protest, they are beaten up ruthlessly. 
This is the kind of attitude that the government has toward its own people, 80% of the masses who are poor. And they have a clear cut divide in their attitude with India and the attitude that they display with Bharat. And this has been clear with their style of working when it came to Anna Hazare and their style of working when it came to Ramdev. They know that 80% are the people who belong to the category that follows Ramdev. And therefore they went to the airport and everything because they were more scared. This is the majority. In the case of the minority, they are not as scared. And at the same time, the minority are the rich. So they didn't take many action. But when it came to this poor, they resorted to Lati Chart. And media, which is most representative from this Bharat, unfortunately, when Ramdev called for his protest, when Ramdev was going about his protest, was smirking. The typical attitude was, what is this man trying to do? Probably he's a dhongi. Probably he has got something wrong. Probably. Why do we have a question mark when it is Ramdev? And why don't we have a question mark when it's Anna Hazare? They are as good or as bad. The question in point is that they are fighting for the right cause. And when they are fighting for the right cause, then media should have shown a similar attitude towards both of them. In fact, a much stronger support for Ramdev because it's the masses who are behind Ramdev and not the elite like in the case of Anna Hazare. And as for the allegations on Ramdev are concerned of money laundering, etc., I can tell you that the government has tried its best over the last two years through all its departments to find all kinds of transactions and money related issues on Ramdev. And had they been able to find anything, I would presume Ramdev would have been behind the bars right now. So when the government is proactively behind him and they have not yet been able to establish anything, it shows two things. That either Ramdev is clean or the government money is with him. And in all probabilities, when he's against the government, he's clean. And this is the government strategy. Anybody who tries to protest, harass him with your harassment bodies, like the income tax, this tax, that tax, FERA, FEMA, your enforcement directorate, and start raising questions on that person's income and on that person's character. This is the government strategy. So the first thing that the government does, the moment somebody comes up against them, is harass him and raise questions on his integrity. Trying to point at that person instead of looking at their own faults and trying to work on changing those faults. Finally, I want to conclude by saying that what has happened shows only one thing. India is no more the democracy that we proudly boast ourselves of. The current situation of India is nothing but simple and plain dictatorship of the psychophants. And this dictatorship of the psychophants must be stopped by civil society, by us coming out and protesting and seeing to it that a government with this kind of attitude does not continue in power because when the moment they did what they did at the Lamlila grounds. They have lost their legitimacy to stay in power. And it is shameful that the Supreme Court, instead of asking them to file a reply in 24 hours, has given them 15 days to file a reply so that they can manipulate the reply, they can create new stories and completely confuse the people. When this kind of a situation happens, the Supreme Court must interfere and ask for a reply in 24 hours, take an action in three days and a very harsh and stringent action showing the government that they dare not do something like this ever again.